Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act Two with our special guest, Manny Pacheco, and of course, uh, my lovable partner, John Coleman. Thank you, partner, Art Kirsch. Uh, but the focus really is on Manny. Oh, Manny, yeah. It's uh, always about Manny. I read an... <laughs> it's always yeah, but I'm not as lovable Manny. as John. That's... Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, Manny, being our Hollywood connection here, I read a, uh, an article not too long ago that said uh, Hollywood doesn't like to tell stories about itself. And I thought to myself, that's a myth that I've heard before because there's lots of movies about Hollywood. Absolutely. Um, the, the two that I think of mostly, in fact, what brought this up was we were watching La La Land. My wife and I were watching La La Land uh, again. Uh, great movie, just love it. Resurgence of the musical, uh, wonderful locations in Hollywood, you know, run, done so recently I could say, oh, I, I know that place. Oh, I've seen, I've been there, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but the other one was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which was a, a recent movie. And um, uh, Quentin Tarantino just captured, uh, even though it was a, a sort of a fantasy film, he captured a lot of the feeling of Hollywood of the period. Um, and he really did a great job. And so the, my point is that it's a myth that Hollywood doesn't talk oh, about sure. I remember, I remember even, uh, uh, and I know that, um, Manny, you're going to take us even further back, but Singing in the Rain and uh, what was it? Uh, was it White Christmas where they, they uh, got together and they were doing something up in uh, a cabin someplace? I don't know whether in that... Connecticut, that yeah, but that, 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 that has more a Hollywood theme that it happened actually in, in Connecticut or, or, right. or Maine or something like that. Or yeah, yeah. Vermont, yeah. So any, in Vermont. But, but, but Vermont. Any, Hollywood does love Hollywood. There's been well, lots of, of course, I don't know what they are. I'm, that's why I'm turning to you. Tell me some of the movies, uh, great movies from the past that are about Hollywood. Well, Hollywood discovered early on that it was a compelling story, the transition from silent films to talkies. And they figured at that point, we need to write movies based on that theme because there were winners and there were losers. And the sad part is that they were tragic losers. John Gilbert, for example, couldn't make the transition, so he died, uh, an alcoholic, because uh, he couldn't find work. John Barrymore suffered the same fate. He ended up dying a little bit later because he turned and became an alcoholic. But uh, the movies that were made, uh, the first and the earliest example was What Price Hollywood? And that was around 1930, and it basically talked about this transition. But the best example that I can come up with was a, uh, a piece that was co-written by the famous director William Wild Bill Wellman, the, uh, the man who created Wings and Public Enemy. He had written a, uh, a, a piece that spoke to the uh, examples that Hollywood was excessive, they were narcissistic, and they were nepotinistic. And he called his piece A Star is Born. And even though he had a very, uh, very cherished career as a director, he never once won an Academy Award as a director. He did win an Oscar as a co-writer for A Star is Born. And of course, A Star is Born is that, that, that tale. One star from Hollywood is rising up. The other is making a just a spectacular fall from grace. And it's such a common theme that it was used again and again and again four times. Uh, a Star is Born has, has, a born has been made. Uh, also, Singing in the Rain does talk about the fact that uh, talkies um, did play a part in hurting the career of, uh, of several characters in the movie. Uh, Sunset Boulevard is another example where uh, Gloria Swanson's character, Norma Desmond, falls from grace, can't, can't find a way to get back into the movie business to save her life. And so she, her fall from grace has tragic consequences on others in the business. And so A Star is Born, that is the blueprint for all that is in, uh, Hollywood loving Hollywood. And the latest example is the artist. Same principle, taking a silent movie about a, a person who cannot translate into talkies and, of course, a lovely ingenue who's on her way up. 
So there's plenty of examples, but I think that they mostly follow the the Star is Born blueprint. So, um, so uh, Manny, was there ever a time that, uh, and by the way, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, should we name this Hollywood Loves Hollywood or Hollywood Loathes Hollywood? Uh, um, it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of country and a little bit of rock and roll. I think, yes, I think that they love Hollywood. I think that they love to tell the seedier side of Hollywood. Mm. I don't think they're, they're, not ash they're not ashamed enough to bring out the real sad <laughs> situations that go on in Hollywood. Uh, obviously, there's been plenty of scandal in Hollywood. And somehow, I mean, all you have to do is look at movies like Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. I mean, that is just a remarkably tough movie to watch because it, it is really a horror playing out in front of you about a former Hollywood star, Baby Jane. So, I mean, another great example of how Hollywood is not afraid to, to, to cast their eyes away from the seedier side of Hollywood. I have to mention one of my favorite uh, Hollywood stories, and I can't remember the name of the movie but it was Steve Martin plays a really sleazy lowball Hollywood wannabe producer and my favorite scene is where he uh, he's trying desperately to look the part and he goes into uh, a famous restaurant to meet a, a producer and as he pulls up in front he sees this famous producer coming in and and he's got short hair Steve Martin immediately takes off a phony pigtail, a phony ponytail, and throws it, <laughs> and throws it in the back seat. He was, he was trying to dress the part. Even with the ponytail, was phony. Was that anyway? The, it, was that the movie Grand Canyon? I think that that was that that movie. I can't remember the name but, of it, but, but it was very on. funny. Yeah. Very funny, very satiric. If you can imagine a a, a any Steve Martin movie. Um, but but you're right. Hollywood has not been kind to Hollywood. No, there's a recent affair that I watched uh, just the other night, a really wonderful movie where Ben Affleck actually plays George Reeves. And it's called Hollywood Land because that's what Hollywood was called back in, in the 1920s and early 1930s. And it basically uh, uncovers the possible motives for the death, the mysterious death of the man who played Superman in the 1950s, George Reeves. And so, uh, and, and uh, L.A. Confidential is another film noir-ish kind of thing uh, that captures the essence of Hollywood. You can also use Chinatown as an example where they use wonderful exteriors that you might have been able to find in movies like Double Indemnity or The Postman Always Rings Twice. So, yes, Hollywood loves that. See, I call it the seedier side of Hollywood because I think that's where the stories can be found. Well, I think one of the reasons why Hollywood loves to loathe Hollywood, too many L's, is that it makes money at the box office. And that's, <laughs> that's all they care. I don't care if you say something bad about me as long as it goes ka-ching. <laughs> you, you just figured that out? <laughs> It'll be interesting uh, to find out what, they, uh, what they, the, the movie they do about Weinstein is. Well, I'm thinking what they're going to do about the pandemic. Whatever they're going to make money on the pandemic, they got to find a way to make money on the pandemic. So they're going to find absolutely it. right. But we were yeah. we were talking about loathing Hollywood. And well, absolutely, so, so. and they're going to find a way to do that. Right. I mean, there's I mean, there's great great examples, but they always seem to be negative or very hard biting, seedy examples. I don't I don't I singing in the rain is probably the closest to the most Pollyannish and and La La Land. It's that, yeah. but even La La Land has a sad ending. The, sure, the, it's a the, tragic, it's a tragic story. Yeah, yeah, the hero doesn't end up with a girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and the music, the Boy, music in La, the music in La La Land is sad music. Com think of, compare all that music to all the music in Singing in the Rain. Sure, it, oh, totally man. different kinds of music. Yeah. Anyway, Manny, great, great analysis. Love talking to you about movies. We'll do it again very soon. I hope. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. And again, they can find uh, lots of stuff about Manny at ForgottenHollywood.com. And you can binge watch Manny at our YouTube channel, Celebrating Act Two. 
So uh, please visit, have fun. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.